The Jeep Wagoneer L. Are you a man or woman who doesn't think cars are big enough? You need it to be more useful, more utility, more size, more girth. Well, Jeep has you covered with the Wagoneer L. It's like driving around in a football field. It's 19 feet long, approximately, which is farther than Mark can run. It has nearly 131 cubic feet of cargo capacity, which is basically two RAV4s worth of cargo space, and it has three rows for all your rugrats. While we have already done a grand Wagoneer video, this is the regular Wagoneer, which means it comes in at about $59,000 and tops out in the mid 80s. This is the competitor to the Suburban and Suburban Long Boy. This is a body on frame truck. Now, because we've already covered the Wagoneer, sorry, the Grand Wagoneer, this is gonna be more of an overview of what this vehicle is, but we will be talking about in depth their all new corporate powertrain, the Hurricane Inline 6. This is the low output variant, but we will be talking about the high output as well. This finally puts to pasture the old 5.7 liter V8. As I already mentioned, it's huge at 131 cubic feet. It's basically the Kentucky Fried Truck from The Simpsons. It's the Canyon Arrow. From the side, it looks like a canal boat, but I will say from the front and rear, it looks fairly normal. From a visual perspective, the only thing that really distinguishes this from the Grand Wagoneer is different badging and less chrome on the grille. On the interior space, this is the Series 2, which means it's not the base model. This, with all of the options, is nearly $85,000, which does make it very, very expensive, but it's on par with what you're expecting from other full-size trucks compared to something like a Sequoia. Most of the materials are on par. There's a mix of vinyl plastics, reasonable feeling leather, and fake wood. While I will say the infotainment in this vehicle is quite good. We've already talked about it. This has the new version of Uconnect, which is Android Automotive. This has all of their corporate switch gear. While yes, it is all piano black, which means it will look disgusting after a while. At least all of the controls are physical and easy to use. And this doesn't get all of the additional bullshit screens that the Grand Wagoneer gets. This has only two screens on the front, which is exactly what you want. The rear seats have Fire TV for your premium children. That is an option, but at least you can entertain those little bastards. And the third row is large enough for full-size adults. With the second row up, I want you to visualize this one last time. I managed to fit eight eight tires in this thing with no issues. But with that, it's time for us to put this thing in the shop so we can talk about some inline six. All right, Mark, we're in the shop with the Wagoneer. Well, this is not on the lift because it's basically physically identical to the Grand Wagoneer. And I don't want to put it up here and get crushed to death <laughs> by this thing. Um, it is, from a hardware perspective, all it is is basically trim level difference from the Grand Wagoneer. These start as rear wheel drive or the Grand Wagoneer starts as all wheel drive. This has optional air ride equipped. Well, where the Grand Wagoneer, it is standard. They have different all wheel drive setups. So they have quad to track one versus two. So whether it has an open rear diff or an E diff, but Unlike other Jeeps, like the Grand Cherokee, which we've already done a video on, this was not meant to go off-road, but it is meant to have very, very good all-weather capability. The engineers of these things live in the UP of Michigan, so they're expecting snow capability, which I'm sure this thing has it in spades. It's, it's a Jeep. It is, but this is what we're here to talk about. They finally got rid of their old 5.7 liter pushrod V8. They're gonna phase out the 6.4, and in its place is now an all-new engine for the first time in like 500 years, from Stellantis. It is the Hurricane Inline 6 and it is a twin turbo. They have two different output levels of this. The 400 horsepower variant replaces the 5.7. The 500 horsepower variant, what they call the high output Hurricane, is gonna replace the 6.4. But tell me about the technology, Mark. This exists for one reason. Compliance and regulations. That's why they built this, because they have a mission to be net neutral, carbon neutral, or get halfway there by 2035. They are pushing towards electrification, which this was also designed to be used in hybrid electric applications. The standard output engine, which this is, is direct injected. It has a single high pressure fuel pump. It has plasma liners on the inside part of the cylinders. And it also has an incredibly high red line of 5,800 RPM. When you get to the high output, they bump at the 6,100 to give you that extra oomph. Yeah, that extra magic. 
So when you throw two, two turbos on an inline six, the concept why they went this way is refinement. You get more refinement out of it. It helps with packaging and it, it, it kind of met their mission for controlling emissions and having better fuel economy. That is essentially it, honestly. There's a lot more technology in this, but it's that half measure next step towards going having everything hybridization or EV. And this is going to be the engine that you're going to see in everything yes. moving forward. And we will talk about the mechanical changes between the low output or the standard output to the high output when we get this in a performance application. I won't be surprised if this makes its way into the Grand Cherokee as like an SRT with a high output. I mean, they're, they're essentially the same engines. I mean, the only thing they're doing is changing the red line and the engine tuning, of course. I, I really, you know, like most car manufacturers now, they're just having a single engine family and making some small tweaks, either the turbos engine tuning. So that's what you're going to see the big change between the, the the normal output and the high output. But all right, Mark, let's go drive this bad boy on the road and talk about inline six power. Thanks, Jack. Mark, is that a hurricane? I wonder what category that is. <laughs> category one. Yeah, because this is the low output. All right, we've already done a video on the Grand Wagoneer. Due to the way this is equipped, it's very, very similar from a dynamics perspective. I'm gonna very quickly talk about it because no one really cares. It drives surprisingly small despite for how, for how long it is, right? It doesn't feel anywhere as ponderous as something like the new Sequoia, the Land Cruiser, the LX, some of the other body on frame trucks. Compared to the Escalade, it actually in some ways turns in a little bit more car like. I don't think the front end is po as ponderous as that vehicle is. And it's, as you can tell, really, really quiet. And it masks speed exceptionally well. You can be doing like 95 miles an hour down the highway and you think you're doing 70, which is impressive. Yeah, I think you have to put in perspective the size of this. And, you know, I, I go up and back, I look at this, and I'm horrified at the size, the interior space. Like, you're clearly buying this probably for two reasons. One, you have a huge family and you need to put a lot of crap in here, or you're using this for, like, livery, like you're driving people around. And when you look at it from that perspective alone, and you compare the drivability and what it's offering, and like what you just mentioned, it drives smaller, it feels smaller to drive, it does get around pretty easy, the engine sounds good, like it is quiet. Um, those those factors combined with the fact that this is huge is really a good thing. It's and it just, tows a shitload. It, it can tow, depending on trim level, almost 10,000 pounds. Yeah, is, it's crazy. A lot. That is a lot. And <laughs> it's, it's very capable. It's a very capable machine. So the counterpoint is you had better be not just you driving this around because that's well, where why the, not? well yeah i mean that obviously that's why i said you've got to have a really specific usage case and then all the other complaints go away but if it's just you on the road that's totally it, it's a waste it is a total waste because there's way better driving suvs there's better handling suvs there's better sounding more quiet ones faster ones more refined everything else but there's nothing else that does the size like this with the exception of maybe like Escalade, but you're moving up the price category quite a bit to get like a really decent Escalade as well. So let's talk about this engine. This is the, again, low output inline six they just made. It's their corporate six cylinder. I'm damn sure it's gonna be in everything that's moderately premium in the future. Um, I wonder, and I, I wish we went to that launch in some way so we could have talked to the engineers, what they benched because this is a really, really smooth engine. I don't think it's necessarily B58, like BMW smooth, but I wouldn't be surprised if they spent a lot of time with that motor. Well, who else makes an inline six? Exactly, well, Mercedes, but it's a garbage can compared to the B58. So yeah, I mean, you're probably benchmarking BMW, and I'm sure Mazda is benchmarking BMW. I mean, that's the de facto inline six. And obviously it's really, really hard to tell in a bus like this, just its capability. How is trans tuning? How is like smoothness and like, and is there any hesitation? Has there been any like performance issues? Compared to the way the 5.7 or the 6.4 are tuned with this gearbox, this is way better. It, it produces torque down low. I never have any gear shock. I always feel like there's enough passing power, even in something this big. It's a very well made a drivetrain. I would take this versus the 5.3 liter V8 from GM in a Suburban, or even potentially the 6.2 in just overall smoothness. It's, Why? because you don't feel anything. Okay. 
It's effortless torque. You don't hear anything. There's no fake engine noise bullshit. The, gear t the gearbox tuning is basically a slush box. And in a vehicle like this, if it isn't going to be nimble, if it isn't going to be exceptionally fast, I want the drivetrain to disappear into the background, yeah. and I never want to think about it. And that's what this does well. What about your fuel disappearing? Because this requires 91 octane. So does this, well, yeah, I guess that is the one negative, because the fuel economy in this thing is horrible. I think during my 600 miles of this thing, and I have not been driving this like an asshole, 14.6. So that is yeah, a big con. I'm, yeah, it, it's, it is huge, though. I mean, it goes back to the usage case of this thing. You ain't buying it because you're, like, looking for the ultimate in fuel economy, but what would the V8 be? To be honest, it'd probably be, like, 10, right? Yeah, it'd be single digits. And while I do miss the sound of a V8, this is this is definitely this does not makes, does make, no who cares yeah and you that's know. how I feel about this so Mark with that I think this is a decent engine I'm excited to see it in other products where you and I can get more excited about the dynamics like an SRT product you know that this is going to be in an SRT product sure <laughs> <laughs> so with that Mark let's head into the final thoughts all right. Final thoughts on the Jeep Wagoneer L. While the jokes essentially write themselves with how big this thing is, it's actually a pretty good truck. It's quiet, it rides well, it is extraordinarily usable. It's more usable than like a minivan because of how big it is. And it returns some fuel economy. I'm sure this engine in a smaller vehicle will return over 20, but in our drive, it returns like 14 or 13 miles per gallon. I don't know what you're expecting. This thing is like 19 feet long. So what about the engine? Because that's really what this video is about. Well, this Mexican-made engine is quite good. I'm going to be entirely honest. It doesn't have fake engine noise. It produces torque effortlessly. It's very smooth. It's very quiet. It's very refined. And it's exactly what this brand needed. What was holding back a lot of the Jeep products from feeling remotely premium was their archaic V8s. Their 5.7 liter was not up to the task, particularly at the price point they were selling that thing at. This will hopefully change that perception for most people, and I think the engine's quite good. So with that, thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon.